it's fantastic to see so many of you here. Thank you very much for coming. For us, it's a really, really important session um, because the words change the fabric of our society from the inside out are really is a big vision. And um, so what we wanted to do was to take you through some experiences that we've had in adapting our approach, both with families and then into schools. Alan very kindly asked me to uh, join the charity because I'm very passionate about education particularly and, um, and I think we have a lot of work to do with education. A lot of people think that education is okay now and we're doing all right with it because you know we've had a lot of sort of politicians talking about education and that sort of thing. I would say that we have a lot of work to do, tremendous lot of work to do with education. I think we're Fall, falling far short of where I would like to be and uh, that is particularly because things are changing quite quickly in our world and unless we keep up with that and with our education we are going to be in more and more difficulty. <coughs> My role here is to, to set the context for what we're doing okay and as we go forward um, and uh, Alan and, and Georgina get more uh, focused in on the education itself, but I'm looking at the context within which education is taking place and what's happening. Um, and I'm probably going to start a bit bigger than you're comfortable with, okay? And that is that um, we need to look at the big picture very much and see what's happening. Well, there's something very important happening now, and that is what we call evolution, but I'm not talking about biological evolution, I'm talking about psychological evolution or psychosocial evolution. And it's quite an interesting stage that we're looking at, because if you go back in history, you will see that um, Almost everyone, well, let's say 90 or 95 percent of the people, did what they were told to do. So they were, had an authority over them, sort of kings and princes and generals and people who were very important like that. And there was also very much a class differences in society and it was the upper class people who had the, the control and all that sort of thing. So most people did what they were told, yeah? And we could say, we could put a percentage on that, we might call it at least 90% of the people did what they were told to do. Okay, so that was what they were accustomed to doing, and that is also manifest in what happened with children. You know, children were told what to do by their parents. That was the authority there. So authority was considered very much the normal thing in those days and indeed it was for thousands of years if you like because that really is the first stage of the appearance of humanity is in that form okay however our evolution our psychological evolution is now accelerating quite a lot and i'm going to stay with the analogy of a little child so first of all, when you're one year old or two years old, you just do what mother tells you to do. You know, even if you don't under quite understand what she's saying at the moment, you do what you're told, right? So that's the early start. And then you remember something called the terrible twos. Yeah? And what is the terrible twos? The terrible twos is the first time the child, who's just two years old, mother says, do this, and the child says, no. And that's being a terrible two. What the child is doing, unconsciously, uh, I would suggest, is the child is beginning to discover whether it has any control of its life or not. So it says no to try that out. Okay? And very often what will happen, mother will say, well, you better do what I tell you and that sort of thing. So they end up going back to do what they're told. It happens again, doesn't it? When does it happen? The next stage? Teenage. Teenage, isn't it? It's adolescence. 
That happens again, and this time they rebel again, right? Now what is the message that that tells us there? We did not respond when they tried the terrible twos. We did not respond openly to that. We just said, no, do what you're told. And there's a tendency for us to do that with adolescent people, to try to control adolescent people. And unfortunately, that's our big mistake. And that is because what is happening is we're moving beyond the autocracy towards self-responsibility. And what your two-year-old child or your 16-year-old adolescent is doing, they're just trying to take some self-responsibility. And we have a tendency to say no. Okay? Now what are we trying to do? We're stopping evolution by doing that. Evolution says it's time for us to gain self-responsibility and we're not going along with that nearly as much as we could do. We're not collaborating with the need that children have now to be able to make more choices. So there's a very, very important era we're going through. So what I'm saying is this is much bigger than education. This is just what is behind the scenes. But interestingly enough, the primary subject of coaching is building self-responsibility. It's awareness and responsibility are the two things that coaching is all about. Bringing awareness and responsibility to the person you are coaching. The awareness comes first because if people are very responsible but not very aware, they make some terrible mistakes. Okay, so they've got to be aware before they do it. Okay? So that's stage number one. And that's the process that we need to support and keep going. Okay? And has education kept up to that? Has parenting kept up to that? How good are we as parents of making our children or allowing our children even to make their own choices? and choose to be self-responsible. No, we tell them what to do. Yeah? And this is part of the problem right now of why I'm saying that sort of autocratic education might have been absolutely fine a hundred years ago. It's not fine now because society has moved on. Evolution has moved on and it's time we woke up. I believe that adolescence, an aggressive adolescence as we see it all over the world, is actually our fault. It's not necessary. It is not necessary that it happens. If we had brought up our children by giving them responsibility at different stages from two onwards, I don't think adolescence would be occurring like it is now in the whole world. So this is the big picture, this is the big evolution picture that we need to take into consideration when we start using these things. So I say that's a very, very key part of this. Um, and let me just take us on here. I, this is a list of this, the quick things that I want to just have you to see and think about. Um, how important is coaching? I've said it's extremely important because it's about building self-responsibility in people. Okay? That is much bigger than coaching to make somebody better at sport or better in their business. Yeah? This is big picture stuff. Okay? Infinitely, coaching is much bigger than coaching. Do you see what I mean? Okay? And now number two there is quite uh, alarming for some of you. Capitalism is dead. Yes, it is dead. And the reason is that if you look at, um, for example, a lot of businesses today, you see adolescence in the behavior of senior people in business because they're greedy and selfish. And that is what adolescents are. That's a characteristic of adolescence, is greed and selfishness. <coughs> now, that may be absolutely fine when you're in a certain stage of growing up. But when you are now leading a business or leading a bank, and you're just greedy and selfish, 
We've got adolescent bankers and we've got adolescent uh, politicians around us, I'm afraid. So those people are holding back human evolution. Okay, now I believe that young people and the next generation are crucially important. What we can best do is help the next generation to take that step forward. Okay, and that's what I'm very, very passionate about education for. I'm involved in four different charities, all working with young people. So that's the, where I'm coming from about this whole subject. The big picture is this. And then the great thing is to, have, um, to take this down to the level at which we can really understand what can be done. And therefore, that's where we're going forward now um, to go. But let me just look quickly through that. Education uh, problems are being stored up for the future. We are making the problems for the future generations. We need to be fixing those problems, not making them worse. Education needs to change. Children are, children are given choices. Very, very important. And, uh, you know, the, the hopeful one there, the public are finally waking up. Yes, they are, and I think the first talk you had uh, uh, yesterday was quite optimistic about the changes that were happening, and this is happening as well as the resistance to change. Both of these things are happening at the same time. There's good bits and there's not so good bits around there. So, I think that's the, uh, the point at which uh, I should uh, pass this on to the level of putting this into practice, I hope that we will all look and contribute in whatever way we can to the bigger issue of the evolution of humanity. But clearly this has to be done very, very practically and uh, this is what my two wonderful friends here are for.